everyone, it's Heather here at Lars, and tonight we are going to be talking macaws. I have my friend Sam here to help me. You guys are definitely going to want to stay tuned, and remember to hit that subscribe button. So Sam is a blue and gold macaw, and just like most other macaw species out there in the world, you're gonna find your biggest, brightest, most colorful macaws in South America and Central America. Macaws come in all different kinds of sizes and colors. A lot of them are on the endangered species list. There are a lot that are not on the endangered species list. Thankfully, Sam being a blue and gold macaw is not on the endangered species list. Now that doesn't mean that uh, they're not watching these species out in the wild. They are still in danger for loss of habitat and uh, poaching and uh, the illegal pet trade. So like a lot of other species of macaws, blue and gold macaws are very, very long lived. Now. This keeps going up for debate, right? How long do they actually live? How long do they live in nature? How long do they live in captivity? And a lot depends on how you are taking care of the bird. So one, macaws, just like any other parrot, needs lots and lots of stimulation. Now that also includes out of cage time and being able to flap their wings and get exercise. The other component to that is their diet because diet is so huge it's so important this is the reason why we feed chop and pellets at the rescue because we want to make sure that all of the birds are getting the absolute best that we can give them and so hypothetically let's take a look at this if you are feeding the bird the best diet possible that is consistent of chop and pellets specific to the species anything that they might get in the wild that is specific to the species. Like for example, these guys eat lots of nuts and fruits and berries and have been known in the wild to pick at bugs, although I'm not gonna recommend that for your captive birds. And you're also getting your bird their annual wellness, you're getting them the right amount of exercise and you're giving them the attention that they need. Hypothetically, <laughs> This bird is going to live to be approximately 70 years old. Now there are a lot of factors that can lead to a decrease in lifespan when birds are in captivity. So besides your diet and besides making sure that your bird gets lots of stimulation and lots of exercise, there are a lot of things in our households that are not good for birds and will cause them to have a shortened lifespan if not lead to death. So here's a couple of the top things. You have Teflon cookware, candles, blade plugins, incense. If you have ceiling fans, you have to think about that. Electrical cords, maybe you have a bird that likes to wander around on the floor. Electrical cords can be a real problem for birds if they go up and try to chew on them. Lots of birds are very, very sensitive to a number of respiratory factors. So if you're not keeping your house clean enough, that can affect the respiratory system. If you burn a pizza in the oven, that can affect the respiratory system. When you own a parrot, it is a complete lifestyle change. It is not just having a pet like a dog or a cat. You literally have to look at everything in your home that could be harmful for them. They have to have special cleaner for their cage that is not toxic to them because you can't use anything like a Clorox wipe. Birds put their mouths on everything. They put their mouths on their feet. They put their mouths on their feathers. They put their mouths on their cage and their dishes and all of their toys and their perches, absolutely everything. So when you're looking at what is safe for your parrot, what's not safe for your parrot, you really have to take a holistic picture of your home and consider what can be dangerous for your bird. Something else that you should consider if you're thinking about bringing a parrot into your home, not only the lifespan, not only the lifestyle change, 
you need to be prepared to have an animal that is like having a two or three year old with a set of pliers that knows how to use them for the rest oh. of your life. They operate on positive reinforcement. You constantly need to spend time training them and making sure that you're paying the right kind of attention to them before you make that kind of a commitment. It is a huge, huge commitment to own a parrot and they are a lot of work. Hi, are you gonna poop on my leg again? You are gonna poop on my leg again, you little fart. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna keep that paper towel nice and handy so the next time that you poop on my leg, I have it right next to me. Are you gonna poop again? Hit the floor that time. Now, it is very, very important. Can you just really? <sighs> That's like the 34th time that you've pooped in this video. You know, everybody wants this cute, cuddly, talkative, funny bird when they are looking to add an exotic bird to their home. And I am here to tell you that it is not like that. People ask me the question all the time, how do you know if a bird bites? Simple answer, it's a bird. Every single bird has the potential to bite. If for no other reason than they might be sitting on your shoulder or sitting on your hand and they might get startled and react by biting you as they're trying to get away from whatever is scaring them. Every single bird bites, every single bird. A number of years ago, I did research into the exotic bird trade and I wanted to really take an in-depth look at what it is like out there in the world and what kind of challenges are being faced by exotic bird owners. And one of the fun facts that I found that's not such a fun, fun fact is that within the first five years of life, most parrots, just like Sam, are passed off four to five times. That's four to five different homes that they live in. When Sam came to the rescue, her previous owner passed her off to me and Sam and I spent the next two hours together. And I thought I was 100% completely in love, instantaneous bond. And the reality is that it did not happen like that. As soon as I put Sam in the cage and let her, she became a completely different bird. And for the next week, she didn't want to have anything to do with me. So very quickly after that, Sam changed her mind and decided that I wasn't such a bad person after all. Sam and I are spending a lot of time together now. A lot of you may know that we lost our educational bird, Bernie, uh, a little over a year ago. Uh, she was a very, very special girl. Her and I were very extremely bonded and we spent a lot of time together and she made a great educational animal for the rescue. So for a little over a year, we have been down one educational bird. Now, a lot of people ask me why I have so many educational birds. It's because you never know who is gonna want to come with you. I do not force any birds to come with me to educational events. And so we want to make sure that we are bringing a bird who willingly wants to come. And if somebody is having an off day, then that bird isn't going to come with us. And that's how I operate things. There's a lot of people who may or may not agree with that, but part of the reason why things like that are important when you're working with a bird is because you don't want to break that trust. The second you start forcing yourself on a bird or forcing a bird to try to do something, you're gonna break their trust in a real big hurry and it takes years, if ever, to get that trust back. So another thing that you have to be prepared for with birds is exactly how messy they are. Just like Sam eating this nut right now, she is literally leaving a trail of almond crumbs all over my lap and all over the floor. And birds like 
Sam will also create quite the poo to have to clean up. They're dusty. All birds are dusty. Some are more than others, but you will have to be cleaning and dusting more regularly in your home. You will need to make sure that you have newspaper spread out just a little bit further than the cage because some macaws like to poop sideways. At the end of the day, there is a lot to learn about macaws, just like any other species of birds. And within that, each of them has their own set of characteristics and their own behaviors that makes every single one of them unique. Thanks so much for watching this week's video, guys. If you ever have any questions about macaws or any other species of parrot, definitely feel free to reach out to us either via our Facebook page or by email. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day.